day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. A lot of people literally died uh, because of, remember when the guy went out and picked some, some wood or something like that, they were out in the desert, and Moses had the guy stoned it there. And that was Moses on the spot saying, this is the interpretation of what, 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 I, what I've written. Kill him. Well, well, in that and, case, and, and it was really like, well, you know, that's kind of extreme. God didn't want to doing some quote unquote wrong, but it wasn't in observance of what had been written. And when, when Jesus Christ came, even when he talked about David and, uh -huh. and the guys eating the showbread and the priest and how they violated the law. But I'm, really, Jesus, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I want, but when I get to a stop sign, I'm going to check that stop sign and say, let me see if this says, ambulance, <laughs> <laughs> police, <What? laughs> fire trucks. I'm going to see if they get an exception. There, there, there so, will be no exception. The reason they turn their sirens on and the reason they make loud noises so you can hear them because yeah, they but, know it's the law. Yeah, and they're gonna break it, and they're about to break it. They're about to exceed saying, and not break it. So if it wasn't a, if it wasn't a, a violation of law, they wouldn't be telling. Turn your lights on when you get to a stop sign and go to blow your horn and see what happens. But, but Vince, before you go, the cops see you, they're gonna stop you, man. Yeah. Hey, Vince, before you go, cause I think I think you're, you're, you're trying to point, and I'm looking at nine. Though, I'm saying is when the commandment came, the guy. Die. What does that mean? What does that mean? When the command, when the, the, the law was given. To, when, was it, when was he alive without the law? He, he said right here, he said, I was alive without, no, he was alive without the law. Okay, what does that mean? Knowledge, meaning the knowledge of the law. The knowledge okay. of the law. And and then he said, so when, when I was alive, oh, I was alive without the law once, which is what, like, that's a pattern of most of us. But when the commandments came, meaning the laws of God, the will of God came, Sin revived. Right. Well, all, all that means is all that means is this: is that he tells you later on in chapter three that the only thing that the law does and always intended to do, the reason that God gave it, was to give you knowledge of sin. Knowledge of sin, right? Right. Okay. If you don't know where it's wrong to run a stop sign, exactly. Right. Conscious wise, you ain't got no problem. Right. You you go through a stop and smiling because you're like, what? But as soon as you have knowledge that you know what? That red, yeah, uh hexagon uh, mm -hmm. with, with the white letters, right. You must go to the complete stop. Exactly. Once that knowledge comes. Right. Right. Now the dominion of law has taken hold of you. That's what he's trying to point out. So right. when he was born, when we we're born. Basically, we have no knowledge of right and wrong in terms of our being able to to know that if you have to be taught certain things. Yeah, right. You have to teach you. Right. You have to be instructed. That's why they had a, a rigid disciplinary system to instruct every Jew in the Mosaic Law. Right. I met a little 13-year-old up in Macon who had memorized the first five books of Moses. Mm. Amen, he, man. He all the books Amen. by heart. I'm like, good Lord. Amen. All the all of them books he had, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, he could quote your any verse. Yeah. Amen. But now, so they are required to have a knowledge of the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the scripture says, uh sin is not imputed. Yes, sir. Right. But there is no law. Where there is no so, law, sin and not confused. What the text is trying to tell us is, is that God established the system. Right. There's nothing wrong with the system. Okay. There's right. something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. That's right. Only, that's what this whole story is about. The system that God established is a perfect system. It's a spiritual system. That's why Jesus said, I came not to destroy the law. He said, ain't nothing wrong with the law. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, he says, I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Exactly, right. I right. came to live this thing out to the jot, to the tittle. 
Yes, sir. And, 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 but but look, at, look, look at it in one place, though. And this is where I kind of got when When Moses and, and, and Elijah were on that Mount of Transfiguration, and Peter wanted to build the, 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 the altars, the, the Lord spoke to him, and the Father spoke to him and said, This is my beloved son, hear him. Yeah. Here's, he didn't say hear the prophets. He no. didn't say hear the law. He said hear him. Right. And and, and that 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 what and I'm just picking up on this. This is definitely this is definitely up for the debate, but I and this is the reason for me. It appears as though when Jesus of Nazareth came, Jesus of Nazareth really took the system beyond where the system was because he said the law said, love your neighbor. They hate your enemy. But he said, I, I said, you love them, bless them, the church, pray for them. You got to love your enemy. He says, not, if they slap you on one cheek, turn to them the other. It wasn't, a, I went from an eye for an eye and a two for two into forgiving them that, you know, despite the usual and persecute you, if a man look upon a woman, he took the thing to a place where it hadn't been before. Nobody even expected it to go there. You weren't even required to go there. Well, okay, but look, when look. Jesus came, he just, like, he shifted the, the meter so high. The, the bar was raised when he got it. Okay, let me tell you something. Under the Mosaic Law, now you got to be careful with your interpretation of how the Mosaic Law works, because the Mosaic Law deals with two things. It primarily deals with the internal relationship that existed among Jews. Okay. Right, right. But it also addresses how a Jew is to deal with a heathen. Right. And also has provision in it for he to become a Jew. Mm -hmm. Right. By proselyte. So you, you got you got all these things conversions now inside of the law. When it says love your when it says hate your enemy, that was never talking about another Jew. Hmm. But even even at that rate, it's still changing. That's the okay. thing that, that, that got me the mosaic law is not changed. Right. Jesus changed. Now, now Jesus said, "Love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and all, love your neighbor as yourself." He said, "All of that is what the Mosaic Law was trying to teach." Well, what was funny about it was he also part of the new law. Huh? He said before he left, he said, "A new law I give you." Yes. And then he delineates these things, right? And, 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 and which was really Hold funny. Hold on, let me ask a question. How was it new if he's quoting the Old Testament? I don't know. I didn't quite get that, but he was the one that said that. He said a new law. If he's quoting the Old Testament, how is it new? I, I don't know. He's, I, I, he's the, summarizing it. He's summarizing it. He wrapped it up in these two commandments of love one another. Right? Yeah. I, 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 and that became... Okay, how it's new. It's new because that same requirement now becomes a, a requirement under the new census. Okay. See. The old system is being put aside. The old covenant. That's, that's what I'm saying. It was. But listen, inside of the new covenant, for a new creature in Christ, in the council, here's what's new about it. That, 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 because, that. Here's what's new about it. Because under the old covenant, no man ever came to the place where he loved God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right. Or his neighbor, right? No. Well, that, 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 you that, that, that. <laughs> what was abstract is actually going to become a reality. A reality, yeah, right. In that sense, it's new to you because you ain't never been there before. Right, right. And, and that's what that's what that's what I, I, I was saying was that Jesus fulfilled and exceeded. So when he when he when he came, I thought fulfilled meant like okay, this is the picture of what he's supposed to be, and bam, there he was. But it was, was what it actually was everything that the law and the prophets spoke of jesus christ manifested but then the manifestation of the law he exceeded that he, he that's why i think it was necessary to have the new well i say necessary the new testament i mean the new testament in his blood because he literally was a bearer of a new covenant agreement with god okay that exceeded that exceeded the previous covenant and it was a better covenant you know about. why I say that? Because not only did he exceed, but he empowered us to do it. The law gave us, you know, relationship issues, I mean, uh, dynamics, but it didn't give us the power to, to, to accomplish it. But in Christ Jesus, who raised the bar, 
and said, I can't even look on a woman and lust after her. Also gave me the power not to do it by filling me with the Holy Ghost. But men, men were already doing that though. What? They were doing the, the same thing that Jesus did. Let me give you an example. I'll give you a clear example. Was Saul David's enemy? Was Saul David's enemy? Yes. Okay. When David got a chance to kill him, did David kill him? No. Why didn't David kill him? Because he was God. He didn't kill him because he was king. He, he was anointed. Oh, no, because was David God's understood anointed. what the David really understood what the Mosaic Law was saying. David he, really understood it. he knew. If you really understood the law, you know I can't put my hands on him. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you understood that question. You did. But most people, most people never understood the Mosaic Law. Now you need to understand this now. When God gives the Mosaic Law, He isn't giving the Mosaic Law to people who He knows that understand and have spiritual insight. He's giving the Mosaic Law to carnal, fleshly minded people. Right. So that's why it seemed like it was a thing to got, Don't mistake the requirement. Look, when, when, when your child is a baby, you will allow him to boo boo on himself. Right. But when that took 18 years old, <laughs> not acceptable, right? <laughs> not acceptable. <laughs> when that's 18 years old, you looking at him like, what went wrong with you? Right. So what God has to do is, God has to nurture the people along and bring them along and teach them some things and get some things in place and get them to understand some things about his tolerance because up front he wants to get the tolerance fully in place. Later on, he'll help them to understand, okay, now we can back off some nothing because I don't want you to really understand. I didn't really want you to understand it, but what I want you to understand, there were certain things that you can't compromise on. Mm -hmm. So he, he has to grow Israel up in the law. Initially, he tells them some things that really gained their fear of him and they're, and, and they're, listen, I say fear not because this. I think it's a literal fear because if it was not a literal fear, there would never be a verse in the Bible where God says to a man, fear not. Oh, well, the word said that the fear of God is beginning of wisdom. Yeah, but, but. So but it had to be established, yeah. It's, it's, it's a real literal fear. Yeah, and it when, is. He, when, he, when he meets a man, he says, look, fear not. Don't, don't pass, stop, don't faint, don't follow your fear not. I didn't come to hurt you. So all I'm saying is that he has to grow men up inside the mosaic system and mature them for them to really understand what the mosaic system really is. And initially when he starts doing that, he knows that they don't understand that. You, but the beauty of it. You'll misinterpret something in the wrong place and misinterpreting something in the wrong place can be fatal. Uh, it is fatal. I, I agree with you 100% because you can't go and kill all the babies off right now. But 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 in the Old Testament, you could if you were going to Canaan. Land. But and that, that kind of I mean kind of asked what Jesus Christ is that next level of development, and that that is the thing that I was I mean and like I said, for me this is you know since kind of this is all, I opened the revelation that we were always growing toward Christ. Even like you said, He brought him along, he showed him the law, He showed him His fierce wrath. If you don't do this wrath, open the ground up and swallow up thousands of years at a time. And then he backs off. It's like, the, it, it was, it, the, the change was so drastic. It's almost like, is this the same God? But in reference to what you just said, it makes perfectly good sense. It had to be brought along in that manner in order for them to gain appreciation for certain aspects of his nature and his desire for them. Because those people who swallowed, got swallowed up in the court of what I believe, still had access to salvation. I'm not sure on that one because I think when Jesus preached, I believe he was talking to them both down there, but they saw a different side of God. But he brought them along and the culmination and the pinnacle of everything that we aspire toward is Jesus Christ himself. Okay, so We are back. growing up to be this man. This man, Jesus, is who we are being transformed into. And when I say this man, I mean his nature, his person, his person, his, his character. Right. I'm gonna throw something at you, and then I'm gonna go. Y'all, y'all can, y'all can throw me out. I, I pick up my excommunication uh, and make money. Why are they throwing I'm you out? You, I'm gonna tell you that in this text, and you need all six verses to really get it. In this text, God is the husband. Okay. 
And, 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 and when you leave that too, I mean, wait, you say God, which part? Yeah. He oh. said, God, God's the husbandman, because that's also in, that, in, in John chapter. Uh, Everywhere you, you, you see the word husband, it's talking about God. That's, that's interesting. That's good. Now, before you leave, I got this one question for you, too. What law is in, in that verse 9 I was telling you about? What commandment is he talking about? And since we're talking about Saul or Paul, he said, when the commandment came, he, he said, I, I was allowed without the law once. He's talking about the 365 plus the 248 laws. But he knew that though before he came into Christ though. So what he's is he? About, he, he did come into Christ. He's not talking about. He's not talking about before he came to Christ. He was talking about before he was instructed. Okay. What he, was, he wasn't born knowing the law. Okay. Okay. When he was instructed. Okay. Okay. As soon as they begin to instruct him inside of the law, and now he has knowledge, that we define up, oh, that's wrong. Oh, that's wrong too. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> All this stuff is wrong. Hmm. It's, it's when the light comes on when you're instructed that he has, he said he was alive. Yeah. Once he had insight. And right. when, when, as, soon as, that, as soon as that knowledge came, he died. Gotcha. Uh, he, he realized he was in violation and the ways of sin is death. Gotcha. And, and then on top of that, and on top of that, you also say it is that you leave in is that the husband that that supposed to be dead in verse one through six is the devil. No. No? Because you got God when you said God. When you're married to another, huh? The father. I told you you're married to another. I mean you see the analogy you were saying is if you're married to another, yeah, but you're still married to the other husband, that implies two different husbands there, right? And I'm yeah. saying God is the husband that you married to. Well, but before you married to him, you married to the devil. You married to the that's devil, what? huh? That's the challenge of searching this thing out, right? Now, right. now, I'll, I'll leave you with this. In verse number, in verse number five, why is he talking about fruit? Fruit of the spirit, bringing forth fruit unto death. Fruit. This one is the death. Yeah, we're going to to bring forth fruits unto death. Not unto life, so that's not the fruits of the spirit. It wasn't the fruit of the spirit, no. That, that, that's the works of the flesh. That means we yeah. Okay, now listen now, okay, now you got that then. Now look at verse four. Well, for my brother, you become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be buried to another, even to him was raised from the dead, that you should bring forth fruit unto God. Right. Yeah, now that's where I, I found that it should be two husbands in it. And right, when you speak of the first husband, it looked like that should be the devil or right. the flesh. Right. Well, let me ask you, okay, well, go back uh, to me. Back up to Romans chapter 6 and look at verse number 22. One second, I got to move it out of the way a little bit. You said what number what? 22. 22. Okay, roll back up just a little bit more. Go back up to this, maybe 17 or 18. Roll back up a little bit. Okay, up right there. It says, verse number, 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 number uh, 19. I speak out to the man of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have, you use your members servant to unclean it. And to iniquity un, in, unto iniquity. Even so, now you are your members of the servant, the righteousness of the holy. But when we were the servants of sin, we were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then? Uh -huh. In the thing whereof ye are now ashamed. Uh -huh. <laughs> For the end of those things is death. Is death. Yes, you see. But now being made free. From sin, uh -huh. from the servant to God, you have your fruit unto holiness, and the end eternal life. 
Now, I submit to you that he's, he's not talking something new in those first seven verses, in the first six verses of chapter seven. Uh -huh. What he's trying to tell you is this. Under the Mosaic system, under the Mosaic system, uh -huh. all you did was brought forth fruit unto death. Interesting. Got a way to see murder, adultery. Yeah. Yeah. And it only is only according to the mosaic system. Because outside the mosaic system, you do anything you want to do if you're heathen. Yeah. You got 15 wives, <laughs> you kill anybody you want to kill. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't got no problem. Yeah. Unless they got a law in their heart that tells them differently. Right. They, at least they have the excuse that they don't have the mosaic law passed down to them. Hmm. He deals with that in chapter one. Right. All I'm telling you here is that, and so now, the reason that adultery is brought up in those first six verses is because this fruit that these people are producing are the children of another man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. And that's the devil, right? Oh, who, who is that? The old man? Or oh, the devil? Hold on. And the old man that they're adultery. It's because they married to God. Yeah. Well, no, they so wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. Stay with it, get pictures. If you go to the Old Testament, God constantly called Israel an adulterer. Right, right. Now, why did he call him adulterer? Because he called him adulterer because he was in mystery with him and went to well. They worshiped something else, right. Okay. They worshiped other worship gods. God. And in this text, not only are they worshiping other gods, they're bringing forth fruit. They're having babies. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I want you to be married to another so you can bring forth fruit of the righteousness and holiness. I want you to be, I want you to be true to your own husband and bear his children as opposed to bearing his children from this other man over there. Mm. <laughs> you see the picture? <laughs> yes, it's so <laughs> right. Now, it, well, when she was, the initial husband appears to have been Satan, I mean, the flesh, or the devil, or, or a combination of the two. Well, uh, I mean, uh, but well, if, it, if it's a devil, then then he they can't be called an adulterer. Well, in in this case, what you're saying, as long as they were married to the flesh, as long as they were you know married yoked to the devil, devil, yeah, they were I mean, not you, going you to. You married to the flesh, and you have baby for the flesh. That ain't adultery. No, no, you should. It's not. So what it's saying is that that person has to die to you, or you have to die to it in order for you to be yoked to another. No, no, no. What he's trying to tell you is, is that. What you don't realize that under the old covenant, as far as God is concerned, if you're in a relationship with God through covenant, that is the same as being married to God. Isn't that a marriage in and itself? The mosaic, the mosaic law is a covenant. Yeah. And marriage is a covenant. Yes. Yes. So these people are married. Israel it is actually referred to in Old Testament as God's wife, as God's mm -hmm. wife. Yeah. Yeah. But, in, in, but I think in this scripture, one of the things he's showing this is as an example is the dominion that a man has over his wife until he's dead or she dies. That is the only way to come out from under that, that, but, that dynamic. But God's got dominion over you under the law as long as you live. But if in this case, I, 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 I don't think he was, he was showing that in this in the, in the initial that this woman was, was not under that covenant with right. God. No. Then the first, the, like the first three, the first two, three verses, he's showing a situation where the woman is not yoked with God, but she's actually yoked with another man. No. You know, with another, no. like, the, like Satan. Or In that first three verses, this woman is married from the beginning. Okay. But she's not married to God. Oh, who's she married to? Uh, her flesh. I mean, no, we come here. That's no. the same thing. We we, we you are can't be married to, to your flesh. You can be married to another person. No, what I'm saying that the spirit of the person was yoked more so with the flesh than it was with the spirit of God. Marriage has to be between two of the same kind, and this is where the problem comes in. I, marriage is between living entities. Okay. Well, God made man it, in His image. To be married to himself. But in accordance with scripture, because of the fall, we were born at enmity with God, so we definitely were married to him. 
uh, we were fall state with yeah here. So the necessity was, no, the reality was the default condition was to be married to the devil. Because no. we were more so to our place. No. Adam, Adam was not created married to the devil. No, I'm not, I'm not, not talking about Adam and, and Eve, but I'm talking about the people subsequent to their fall in the garden. Everybody was married to the devil. Okay, but all I'm saying is this. Initially, man is created to be in a relationship with God. That's his purpose. Yeah. That's the initial, right? And, and that was the case when they were created. I see. But in this situation right here, it appears as though she's in a fallen state. I, I see. No, well, well I, to, can, can I say this? Yes, to, 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 from what I'm understanding, based on Bishop, is Adam who was born married to God. Yeah. After the fall, adultery. Everyone, everyone born is born in adultery. Yeah. Right. Because Adam committed adultery. And, and every not. every seed within him yeah. is born into adultery, which is born into sin. It means he produced that his own kind. He became an adulterer, and everything he produced was an adulterer as well. Adultery doesn't change purpose. No, it doesn't. It doesn't change the covenant. Now, this is what law comes in. Y'all want to talk about love. So Adam committed adultery, walks away from God, committed a sin. The love of God says, I ain't going to let you go. Yeah. Even though you jacked up and you constantly cheating on me, I ain't going to be satisfied until you back with your rightful husband. Yeah. And I am your only rightful husband. Right. You're not Now, free. now I'm going to allow you to die to me in this form. And I'm going to take another form and let you remarry me in that form. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also, I, I'm going to let you marry me in Christ. Right. In spirit. I see what you're saying. Because the scriptures say you, that person is free to marry another, but they were never free to marry another. No. But look, at, look at who he said you're free to marry another. Yeah. Even the him who was raised from the dead. Right. You ain't marrying somebody else in the flesh now. Right. Keeping the marriage somebody not in the spirit. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know this 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 is screaming Job to me. <laughs> Take care, Bishop. I gotta go. Get, hope you get on time. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Be blessed, sir. Get so, you on Thursday. Yeah, have... So this is this is truly screaming the book of Job. Uh-uh. Job now. Uh, I, that's all that keeps popping in my spirit is how Joe stayed with his wife. <laughs> Even after all that she did. Hmm. And he kept going after it. <laughs> Man, that is crazy. That is legit. <laughs> that's deep. That's real. She gone. I'm gonna step for away for a second. I'm gonna move this canvas off my RV. It's hot in here. Right back into what we're talking about. Was the I talked to Bishop this morning. We were here. Uh, Elder came in about nine or eight forty-five or something like that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up a conversation concerning love. Back to what we we're dealing with the other one, right? Okay. And 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 the fact is that. And I, and I, I can, I can, I can, you know, I can ask you the same thing. Was I don't think the the message of loving one another is is very uh, pervasive in the ministries of the day of, of of loving one another to include loving God. But the, the main thing is that you're seeing emphasis where somebody says, I love God. You, you hear that, right? You hear a yeah. testimony, I love God. Oh, I love God, yeah. hallelujah. But- But what about the one that's like to that? Exactly, right? You see what I'm saying? Is the emphasis yeah. about loving one another. Yeah. And I think that's that's where, I think we, the, the, uh, the shortfall is coming in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and and I was talking the other day and the saying is, see, I think the message was lost from the time the Roman Catholic Church was taken over, you know, when, when the Romans took it, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna incorporate and make everybody a Christian. 
but the 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 concept of loving one another was 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 